My name is Ricky Pagan. I'm a fourth year medical student at the UAB Hearsing School of Medicine, and I'll be presenting a case of a persistent sciatic artery. This case is prepared with the help of Dr. A.J. Gunn. The patient is an 80-year-old female with non-rheumatic aortic stenosis that presents for CT angiography in preparation for transcatheter aortic valve replacement. She has a past medical history of mitral regurgitation with prior mitral valve repair, hypertension, and atrial fibrillation. The patient denies any history of prior trauma, peripheral vascular disease, or ischemic pain in the right thigh or right lower extremity. The patient also denies any loss of sensation in the right lower extremity. Axial CT angiography at the level of femoral heads demonstrates a well-circumscribed arterial structure within the right greater static frame and is indicated by the yellow arrow. The structure is asymmetric when compared to the left. Axial slice from CT angiography at the level of the upper thigh demonstrates persistence of the arterial structure from the right greater static foramen into the thigh as demonstrated by the yellow arrow. No such structure is seen on the left. Notably, the right superficial femoral artery is normal in size without significant atherosclerotic disease as demonstrated by the blue arrow. 3D volume rendered CT angiography demonstrates the enlarged asymmetric arterial structure arising from the right internal iliac artery as demonstrated by the blue arrow. It continues into the thigh as demonstrated by the yellow arrows. It is relatively the same caliber and diameter throughout its course. Coronal CT angiography at the level of the pelvis demonstrates an asymmetric arterial structure labeled here with the yellow arrow. It passes through the right greater static foramen as demonstrated by the blue arrow. It is relative to the same caliber and diameter throughout its course. A conventional femoral angiographic image done during TAVR demonstrates that the enlarged vascular structure arising from the right internal iliac artery. It has been highlighted with a yellow arrow. It continues into the thigh through the greater sciatic foramen, which has been highlighted with a blue circle. The final diagnosis was a persistent sciatic artery. Persistent sciatic artery is characterized by the presence of a large vessel arising from the internal iliac artery on CT angiography, MR angiography, or conventional angiography. The vessel continues to pass through the greater sciatic foramen adjacent to the sciatic nerve and below the purest penis muscle into the lower extremity. Top differential diagnoses include peripheral vascular disease and an aneurysm of a branch of the internal iliac artery. The characteristic location of the vessel through the greater sciatic foramen is more indicative of a persistent sciatic artery than a collateral vessel. The visualized superficial femoral artery on the right is patent and without significant atherosclerotic disease. Given the vessel seen in this case is uniform in size from its origin through the greater sciatic foramen and into the lower extremity, an aneurysm of a branch of the internal iliac artery is unlikely. Persistent sciatic artery is present in 0.3% to 0.6% of the population and results from a failure of sciatic artery involution during development. Most patients with PSA are asymptomatic. However, 48% of patients with PSA form aneurysms that may produce further complications. PSAs are at increased risk of stenosis and occlusion with incidence rates of 7% and 9% respectively. Because of these increased risks, patients with asymptomatic PSA should be observed with yearly colored duplex ultrasound. Aneurysms of PSA with complete SFA can be managed endovascularly with coiling or stent grafting or surgically with ligation or excision. If the SFA is hypoplastic or absent, femoral popliteal bypass grafting may be required. Symptomatic distal PSA occlusions can be treated medically with thrombolysis or anticoagulation or surgically with bypass grafting. PSA stenosis can be treated with angioplasty, bare stenting, or bypass. Thank you for taking the time to view this case.